Hey, I'm Chris Ralph, the professional prospector, and today I'm talking to you about filming with television channels. You know, uh, <laughs> why would I be talking about that? Well, I spent the day today filming with a, uh, uh, a TV cable channel from Europe called ARTE, or Arte, if you want to call it that. And uh, they came up here to Virginia City and we took a look at several of the mills. We looked at some of the different places where they mined ore and talked about the, the ore from uh, Nevada. And we talked about the early day placer miners that eventually came up and found the Comstock load. And, and you say, well, why did they come to the Comstock load if they wanted to talk about gold? Well, you know, gold, actually the Comstock all told from beginning to end was pretty close to equal for gold and silver. I mean, some deposits were a little silver heavy, others were a little gold heavy, but all in all averaged over the whole Comstock load, uh, you know, the gold and silver values were pretty close to even. Now, you know, uh, the, the, uh, by weight, because silver isn't as valuable as gold, by weight, the silver was a lot more, but by value, it's pretty close. So they came up because, you know, the early day miners found placer gold down in the canyons below. And there was a lot of uh, uh, the, the processes for milling. And of course, for milling silver or silver gold ores is pretty much the same. And so we looked at the mills. We talked about different stuff. And, you know, I pretty much was here all day long doing just that, which is fine. I didn't mind at all. But... Uh, you know, you, I bet a lot of you have watched some of the gold and silver shows on TV, some of the prospecting shows that they have, uh, you know, from the gold rush shows to all, I mean, that's kind of morphed into a whole bunch of them. There's, you know, ones up at, at uh, Nome and, you know, all over the place. There's even ones in Greenland. But, uh, you know, uh, you watch those and, and you, you got to take them with a grain of salt. I'm not here to tell you that it's all phony because that, that's not true. But I would tell you that it's not all 100% real either. It, it's reality dramatized. Because, uh, you know, normal the normal interactions of people, uh, you know, the normal interactions of people working together, you know, you guys probably work jobs and stuff. You, you don't want to be having fisticuffs with your co-workers and you don't want to be yelling and screaming and you know getting angry and and that kind of stuff uh, to the best of your ability your employer probably wants you to get along with your co-workers and for the most part most of it that that's what we try to do but that's not very dramatic it's not very exciting you know and so they take reality and they want to dramatize it some they want to make it so that it's interesting to the viewers. And so it's, it's kind of different doing that. The other thing that's, that's interesting is uh, a lot of stuff that happens, you do it once. They say, that was really good. Could you do that again? Uh, or could you do that again and this time do it shorter or do it longer or emphasize it more or show more passion or, you know, go through some of these other things like that. And, you know, a lot of the shots I did today, we'd do it once. That was good. We'd do it twice. That was pretty good. We'd do it three times. You want us to do it a fourth time? Yeah, sometimes you do do it four times. It's just what the producer and the director really want to see in their final product. And so, you know, things are sculpted and shaped to be what the the show director, it's a show producer, whoever is in charge, what that person wants to see in their final show. And so, you know, for the most part, that's what you do when you're doing a TV show. And then, you know, the people that I worked with today, they were great, they were no problem. You know, the doing stuff over and over again. I've, I've done a number of TV shows for Discovery and I did one for G4 and, and some others and, uh, you know, it's it's pretty similar that doing do this yeah okay good do it over again yeah no I'd like you to do it but uh, uh, do that a little faster and and cut it down a little bit because it takes up too much time 
you know, they, they, so it's fun. I, I'm glad I did it. Uh, I, I spent the whole day doing it. And, and like I say, I really enjoyed it. But, uh, you know, I've been offered uh, like the TV shows of some kind of series. This show that I did with Arte is a one-off, one-shot kind of deal. It's not going to be a series of things with me in it. Um, you guys are probably glad for not having a series with me in it, but I can tell you my wife is glad for not having a series with me in it. Uh, I'm glad for not having a series with me in it. I've been offered stuff. I've had people talk, try to talk me into things. It's like, yeah, I, 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 one is I'm way too boring, right? I'm, I'm just not, ah, you know, I'm going to get out and have a fight with somebody. You know, that's not me. And, and if you want me to be somebody like that, it's just not me. So, uh, you know, the, the people today, they didn't, didn't really need that. That's more the reality shows where they want to dramatize everything and, and turn it into, turn things that aren't dramatic into a drama. But uh, anyway, I had fun shooting today. And uh, when, the, when the show is done, which may well take six months, that's another thing, is you get these shows, like I do this video and I'll take it home and I'll cut it up and edit it and do a little few things and make some few changes, maybe cut out some spots, uh, redo a few things or something. And, but I'll be done with it in a couple of days. Um, the, the really TV shows, um, they take months to cut and paste and chop and refine and, and just make it perfect because I freely admit their production standards are a hundred times higher than what mine are for my YouTube videos. Uh, you know, I, I want you guys to enjoy my videos, but, uh, you know, I'm just not going to put in, you know, 50 hours or a hundred hours to try and edit one of these things perfect. You'll notice that I don't put music in the background of my videos because, you know, I think you guys listen in for what I have to say and, and the experiences that I have to show you, not for some elevator music that might be running in the background. <laughs> so another thing that that's, has to do with TV shows that's been my experience is, you know, they'll film, if they're going to film an hour long program, uh, they'll film 10 times that much video. So, you know, they'll start out with 10 and movies do the same thing. They start out with a huge amount of video and then they have to kind of winnow it down and winnow it down and winnow it down until it fits in the size that they want it to be. And so, you know, oftentimes when you do, like I do a video today, I don't know what uh, sections they're going to keep, what sections they're going to toss, but there'll be a good percentage of the stuff that I filmed with them today that will end up on the cutting room floor, so to speak, obviously the they don't do that anymore because there's not, you know, film video, but because uh, it's all electronic. But it'll essentially end up in the the, the trash folder of the computer in, instead of in the final version of the video. But like I say, when the final version is out six months or maybe more from now, I'll be sure and let you guys know. I'll do a video. I'll show you some stuff and some of the stuff that I did today like going through some of the old mills and that kind of stuff I will bring you in and do a whole video just my video on the old mills the old mill processes how the old timers worked you know what the what the methodology was to extract gold because I know there's there's people that watch my channel that are interested in how to extract gold and silver out of ores that's fine that's a, an interesting thing so I will reshoot um, my own version of those and uh, we'll talk about it and I'm sure you'll enjoy those videos so that stuff is coming but uh, I thought I'd just you know have a little talk with you today about filming with TV crews I've done it before you know it, it's something that you know I don't mind doing once a year maybe twice a year I wouldn't want to do it for a series that would I think about kill me um, yeah, I, I just I just can't see myself doing that day in and day out. And the reality shows, in all honesty, um, like I say, they're not 100% fake, but they're not 100% real either. They're shaped and 
altered and you know dealt with and and molded to be dramatic and exciting for you the viewer to watch you know that you got to see the treasure we're finding or you got to see the pounds of gold or you know you got to see these two guys that were friends duking it out and anyway <laughs> you know uh so when you watch those reality shows take it with a grain of salt because it's like i say not a fake and, and you know there's there's a lot of reality in those but there's there's drama in there too that's emphasized that may have been a little deal and you know another thing that they do on a lot of those shows is equipment breakdowns oh no our equipment broke down we have old beat up cheap equipment that we bought for almost nothing and and now it's broken surprise surprise and uh you know, and now we can't produce because all our equipment is broken. What are we going to do? You know, it, it, that's, that's the drama of some of those shows is dealing with uh, the constant equipment breakdowns. But you know what? The truth is a lot of small scale mining, they do have old equipment because, you know, they don't have huge amounts of money to invest. I mean, look at the, the cost for like a, a bulldozer or a front end load or a big backhoe or a big excavator something like that the cost is big or big milling system to mill your ore so you know the equipment is old and surprise surprise it breaks down a lot and you're spending a lot of time and money on maintenance and it costs downtime that's that really is true that's normal mining for small scale miners um, but you know it's just inconvenient it's not drama it it's uh you know just the the realities of day-to-day -day life as a small scale miner so i hope that you've enjoyed this video and uh that you find it interesting um i'm like i say gonna be coming out with more now most of my videos are about finding gold and prospecting and if you want to get the skill of learning to find your own gold because really it is a skill and what you know makes a difference then you want to take a look at my book because I wrote a book on how to increase your skills as a prospector and I'm gonna tell you a little bit more about my book right now so let me tell you a little bit more about my book um, it's called this full of gold and I wrote it because I want you to be able to go out and find for yourself this full of gold. And uh, you can see that it's a, an encyclopedia with all kinds of information, pictures and that sort of thing. It's not in color, but uh, uh, color would have cost me a lot more to have printed. And so the book would have cost a lot more. It's for sale on Amazon and you can pick it up. I'll put a link in the description below. I also serve as the editor for a, a prospecting magazine it's icmj's prospecting and mining journal and honestly you should check that out we've got stories uh, and information legal stuff everything you know to increase your skills as a prospector i write articles in this every month and a lot of other very experienced prospectors contribute to the magazine as well so check the magazine out also i have a website and the website is uh, at nevadaoutbackgems.com. I'll put a link for it in the description below. But there's gobs of information there that you will find useful in your prospecting efforts. Finally, I want to say that I really appreciate your comments and thoughts and even a positive criticism. Don't come on there and just toss out insults because I'll just delete your comments. But if you've got uh, helpful things to say and questions to ask, do write and, and put those in the comments because I answer my comments to people and uh, you'll hear from me in, in, you know, in, in responding to you. Uh, so if you've enjoyed this video and you like what you see and you're interested in uh, finding out more, well then sign up, subscribe, and hit the, uh, the notification bell so they'll let you know when I post new videos. And, you know, like it and share it if, again, you, you see stuff that you really are excited about. And I'll be coming out with lots more new videos. And so we'll see you again real soon.